Hi, it's Mr. Adams from Middle High School. This is a video on heat calculations involving phase changes. Um, we did the heating and cooling curve in class, right? And we saw that at there's a point um, on the heating and cooling curves where temperature does not change, right? Okay, so if you have no change in temperature and you use this equation that we used previously here, Every time you use this equation, this value of delta T will be zero, and subsequently, the whole equation for Q, the heat equation, would be zero also. Um, that will not work for us, so we cannot use this Q equals MC delta T equation any um, time we're at a phase change. And as a recap, right, we know that vaporization takes place here when we have a liquid turning to a gas, okay? And we have, in the reverse way, we have condensation. We have melting where a solid turns to a liquid, and the reverse of that would be freezing. Now it just so happens um, they have two other equations in addition to this one um, on our reference tables on table T, where Q is equal to M H F and Q is equal to M H V and we agreed in class right that we'll use this equation of Q equals to M H F right anytime we're dealing with fusion F or freezing F so it's F H of F for F and F that's a memory device so anytime we have this situation right here we will be using Q equals M of MHF. Now for this situation over here, for boiling or vaporization and opposite condensation, we'll be using the equation Q equals to MHV. Okay. Now a lot of times they use water and the values for water in terms of heat of fusion and heat of vaporization can be found on table B. Um, one more thing before we move on. Um, Melting, okay, evaporation, and sublimation, right, all involve a, um, a taking in of energy. So if you take in energy or absorb energy, that process can be determined to be um, endothermic, because right? you can be asked in a certain phase change, is it endo or exothermic? And on the flip side of that, okay, deposition, all right, freezing and condensation okay all involve release of energy or they'll be exothermic now how do you remember it just simply look at what's happening to the particles if you have for example liquids right right here and you have a solid turning to a liquid if the particles right are being more spread out okay more random you are absorbing or taking in energy so for example melting would take in energy it would be an endothermic process so if the particles are spreading out it's taking in energy and if the particles are coming closer together they're releasing energy and they're exothermic okay typical question right here you're looking for the mass of a substance right okay and they give you the heat of vaporization. The heat of vaporization should be HV. Okay, so put it in there. And they give it to you as 885.2 joules per gram. Okay? And they gave you the amount of joules that are required to boil this substance. So as we remember, boiling is a phase change. There's no change in temperature. So we cannot use this equation. So since they said vaporization, right, and they gave us H of V, we can assume that we're using Q equals to M times H of V uh, as our equation. And we can also rewrite, rewrite this equation as this way right here. Q is equal to M times H of V. All right. So in this case, we are trying to find the mass. So to find the mass right here, it will simply be M is equal to Q over H of V, right? And you just plug your numbers in. So the J stands for joules, which is our Q value. So the 4,800 
82.2 joules goes in the top always your units and the HOV value is given to us here it's 885.2 okay and that's joules per gram all right so what happens next we do a simple um, cancellation the joules and the joules cancels out we're left with grams that makes sense since we're looking for mass and our mass in this problem would be 5.52 grams okay all right and you're done you simply move on now for example they can give you a problem and they can ask you to find even the heat of vaporization for example but if they do that they must give you these other two values so once again if whatever they ask you to find you will have the other two variables all right moving on what is your amount of energy you need to melt 955 grams of ice so you can be given a problem just like this right so we look for keywords this in this this time it says melting all right so we know from experience melting takes place over here okay there's no change in temperature so we cannot use q equals mc delta t but we will simply use q is equal to m h f now how do we know to use q equals m h f because of this keyword right here melting okay so if we saw melting or freezing we will use r h of f right here okay and since Atkins to find how much energy and we know energy is in joules okay and we know Q stands for energy we will have to find Q Q is our unknown alright so Q would be simply equal to M times H of F right and since the substance is solid water okay ice uh, will be equal to the 955 grams right times the H of F for water. Now once again, the heat of fusion for water can be found on table B. And if I'm not mistaken, it's 334 joules per gram. Okay, and you do some simple cal cancellations. The grams and the grams, they cancel. Okay, you'll be left with joules. It makes sense since we're looking for heat energy. And the final answer is this number right here, 318,920, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, joules. All right? And that's it. Okay, folks. Um, as always, hard work plus sacrifice equals success. Um, this is a very brief video on calculations involving phase changes you cannot use the delta t equation because at phase changes there's no change in temperature your kinetic energy is um, resting your potential energy is doing the work at that case right there remember whether to know whether a phase change is exo or endothermic you simply look at the particles if they're separating they're taking in energy to separate and that will be endo and so on all right take care